We're good? We're good. Hey, welcome everybody. I'm Gray. I'm Nick. And we are doing a project called Decibels, which is creating hearing enhancers for people who don't want to wear hearing aids. Um, and during the course of this project, um, I learned a lot of interesting things from my friend Nick, who uh, would say has different hearing than the average person. Uh, I think we'll get into that later on what exactly you're supposed to say. And there's a lot of cool, interesting, also some embarrassing stories that <laughs> came up. Uh, so we thought we'd turn the camera on and start talking about it and see what happens. Yeah, cool. Uh, so Nick, could you give us a background on like what uh, what your hearing is like or how it's different or if it's different or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I found out that I needed hearing aids around age 10 because I was in class at school and my alarm was going off on my watch and I didn't realize that I was annoying the whole classroom because my <laughs> watch was <laughs> super, super loud. Um, and this was a really like high frequency sound, a really high pitched tone, and I just couldn't hear it. And so I think my mom took me to the local hospital, I had a hearing test and they were like, you've got high frequency hearing loss. Mm. And this basically means that I can hear kind of lower tones, like the rumbling of an engine, like kind of normally, but then when it gets to the higher tones, so the high pitch beeping of a, uh, of a watch, I couldn't hear this. Um, and you might kind of think like, this isn't even super important to kind of hear such sounds you don't even need to hear all the yeah. time. But I guess it becomes a lot more important when you think of sounds like speech, which is just made up of so many different tones, some low, some high. And um, it's really important to be able to hear different tones at enough of the right volume in yeah. order for it to make sense. And so, yeah, like from the age of 10, I, needed hearing aids but i completely avoided wearing them until i was i think 19 because wow. i just didn't want to be someone who was wearing hearing so aids that's like nine years basically yeah, yeah yeah i just did i mean i wasn't like every now and then in situations where i really needed to i think there was a point when i was like 16 17 i was working in a uh, in a restaurant uh it was a very kind of posh restaurant and i was a waiter Ooh. i didn't want to be in situations where people would ask me like hey can i get a coffee and i come back and i bring them a coca-cola uh, or something <laughs> so, uh, so yeah i mean i was in very like specific situations but any social situation which i guess was so much more important for me to yeah. be able to hear in social situations i wouldn't wear hearing aids because i just didn't want to be that person wearing hearing aids mm -hmm. i kind of feel like my social standing or maybe on like a visual level. I don't know. I'm trying to kind of compute what like a 16 yeah. year old was thinking at the time. Um, but that was kind of more important to me to feel part of the tribe, part of the group than it was to be able to even hear the tribe or hear the yeah. group. Yeah. So were there any situations where uh, someone was like, I love you, Nick. And you were, the response were like, no, thanks, I already ate. <laughs> so many <laughs> like honestly i can't oh, I, I think it's also just so many coming of age kind of situations where like i meet a girl and yeah. be kind of uh at some after school party or whatever yeah. and it's you realize there are just so many super important parts of conversation mm -hmm. that sometimes you can't stop and be like hey sorry what did you say uh, because it just ruins the wow. moment. It ruins the moment. And like, I think there are definitely a number of situations like going through school where I might be at a party and I was talking to a girl and they might say something and I just, I can't tell you what they said, but yeah. I know that like, I clearly didn't um, say the right thing. You just see the like the smile and nod. Oh, kind of plenty thing. of that. Yeah. Plenty of smiling and nodding. But, but that, you know, that's a really interesting topic as well because like, I could have said in any of those situations, hey, sorry, I've got hearing loss. Mm -hmm. um, can you can you speak up or can you speak clearly or can you like more clearly or can you speak slower? Um, but, you know, the last thing that I think what a person wants to do when they're trying to be their best self 
mm-hmm. trying to like talk to a guy or a girl that they really like and want them to think the highly of them yeah is to kind of put yourself down and say hey i've got a disability mm-hmm. i think it's, it's something that i didn't want to do and i think i see that a lot in the hearing loss community i mean that's hearing loss community is a kind of different uh conversation maybe but a lot of people with hearing loss especially as it's gradual hearing loss uh people getting older mm-hmm. they just avoid the the topic of hey yeah. i've got bad hearing because yeah. it's in a way of vocalizing that is kind of telling the world hey i'm less able than i would like to perceive myself yeah it's so strange though because like for instance if you look at like like eyes and glasses and everything like they don't really say like vision loss anymore. It's like you're either a zero or a plus two or a minus two. You yeah. know, it's so like normalized. And I think in hearing it's it's kind of, I don't know if it's odd that, that that hasn't happened yet, that it's just like, you know, you either have like a zero hearing or you have like a plus two or a negative two kind of hearing, you know? Yeah, I, I think there's a few different reasons why and I mean, one of those is that hearing is such a social tool where I feel like if you have a bad eyesight, Mm -hmm. it could be like minus one, minus three, minus five. Yeah. Until you're like very severely visually impaired, Mm -hmm. it's not going to affect how you communicate with people Mm. necessarily, like and your social standing and Mm -hmm. stuff. Um, with hearing loss though it's such a social tool that a slight lack of hearing inhibits your ability to be sharp in conversations Mm. be the first to say something Mm. uh like laugh at a joke that someone made it it's so much more attached to your ability to communicate yeah and and uh and socialize and and connect with the people around you than vision and so i think as much as like we often talk about like if you have bad eyesight you can just get glasses and they're cool yeah and bad hearing why can't you do the same for hearing yeah yeah they're they're not the same thing like vision and sight but that still doesn't mean that we can't treat them um in a assistive technology sense Mm -hmm. like the same thing because in many ways your hearing is that much more important to your ability to communicate with people yeah that's true i mean it's just like you know it's it seems like such a shame that you can't like go get uh let's say like a cool hearing aid or something that's like you're gonna wear it like oh like you know because sometimes i like my vision like it's pretty like pretty good i think but every once in a while i'm like oh i kind of wish i had glasses so i could like have that style you know and, like <laughs> yeah. it's really like sometimes it looks really cool and it's like in my mind i don't see why your hearing can't be the same thing you know like it you totally just don't have as many options no i was so jealous going through school that i had that, that i didn't have bad eyesight yes yeah, like instead it's of it, hearing yeah it's such yeah. like a strange thing to be kind of jealous or yeah, em- yeah. Self, right but i was kind of i was like if i have to have some level of impairment why couldn't i have bad eyesight uh-huh. instead and at the, i wasn't thinking about you know the the actual difficulty of not being able to hear yeah i was thinking of the difficulty of not being able to rehabilitate and that not being able to mm. have like a piece of technology like something that i wear that i'd actually want to wear yeah and so people who i mean there are plenty of people at school who are wearing glasses frames which didn't even have lenses in. yeah really yeah, yeah because you know there's this kind of chic like geek chic yeah exactly thing. it's, it's like, cool uh yeah i think zoe so deschanel really blew that up oh you know? absolutely she, she yeah absolutely and i think <laughs> th- this is it's because there is like a meaning which is attached with wearing glasses uh-huh. which goes outside of being able to see better mm-hmm. and i think that in itself is like fascinating you look at lebron james who's the like professional basketball player he had lasik surgery back in 2007 okay so he doesn't actually need glasses yeah he can just buy new eyeballs yeah, really- yeah. <laughs> he can buy yeah. a whole new head if he needs to <laughs> but like he he still wears glasses in like the post-match interviews because it gives him this kind of business focused like philanthropist mm. character yeah like image that is what we kind of as a society have created around glasses yeah and that has zero connection to being able to see better 
Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, I, I mean, there's debates around in the past whether it was something along the lines of people with glasses would read more. Yeah. So therefore they're like smarter and yeah. that's where the geek thing came yeah. from. But like, no one really knows like how glasses kind of attach that. But the main thing was they're visible. Mm-hmm. That, that if you're wearing something, people attach meaning to it. Mm-hmm. And that's how it kind of happens. And when you look at the hearing aid world, we're always trying to hide it. It's always like as small as possible, as hidden as possible. Yeah. And then, so there's no way to attach any positive meaning to it yeah. because it's always being hidden as if you're ashamed of having it. Yeah. So if there was like an equivalent for hearing aids as there is eyewear, then that would just be awesome to be able to kind of create that meaning. Yeah. But like, what does it actually mean to to wear technology that improves your ability to communicate with everyone? Yeah, I mean, I'm a total believer in that because I'm, I'm a product designer. So basically my job is creating objects for a living and I I totally believe that the things are just things you know and the more I do it the more I, I believe that and it's really like everything around it that kind of gives this this meaning and the story to it so yeah yeah absolutely that's I think that's the goal with with decibels that we create something that's like you know it's it's not just the thing but it's also how we look at that thing you know yeah and, yeah because uh, I think you know products will influence consumer behavior yeah but the only way you can change the way people behave in life Mm -hmm. is by telling a story along with that product yeah as well i mean like all the best brands do it i mean apple's incredible products with their user experience being so fantastic and their design being so perfect it's only being used by everyone because of also what it means to own an apple product Mm -hmm. and i mean they did this like think different campaign back in the the 90s where it was we're not going to talk about the product at all it doesn't matter how many gigabytes of storage you have it doesn't yeah. matter how fast the processor is it matters that thousand songs right yeah thousand yeah songs so this is pocket. it a thousand yeah. songs in your pocket and the thing yeah. different campaign they did like this like who would use a mac even if like these people who were so influential in the world that even if they didn't uh even if they were already dead before Macs became popular they were like oh, okay they were like even if uh like if computers were around yeah. then they would have used a mac oh, okay. and it was this idea of like what who's the kind of person that uses this product and like owning an apple product became such a well and still is a status symbol yeah on top of it being a very well designed and engineered piece of technology mm-hmm. yeah and yeah i guess that's what we're striving towards as well absolutely i'm a my screen back Perfect. Okay, thirteen minutes. Cool. Uh, yeah. So maybe maybe we can talk about um, getting into like because I'm I'm always trying to empathize like with what it's like for you as like a someone with um, different hearing, so to say. I guess we could talk about that in a second too. But is it like so? I I have the situation where I'm I'm a native English speaker and I live in Germany. And uh, of course, some of my interactions I have to do are in German. Mm. Um, and my German's like, it's it's good, I'd say. Like, I'm definitely not like like uh, full, full fluent, but I'm like, I can work in German and stuff. But, you know, there's situations where if I'm not completely focused on the person speaking, yeah, um, then I, I can't, I miss the meaning of the sentence kind of thing. Absolutely. And it's like such a similar kind of thing with hearing loss. Yeah, in a okay. Way. Because, I mean, there's been times where we're working together yeah. and like you, you, I'll be working on my laptop, you'll be on yours and I can hear you talking, but I have to actively kind of listen and concentrate yeah. to understand like what it is you're saying mm-hmm. sometimes. And this is, this is, I guess it's that similarity of like deciding whether or not to really pay attention and see if you can understand the language. Yep. Uh, the active listening versus kind of passive mm-hmm. listening. Yeah. I think that's a, a thing that I think a lot of people with hearing loss struggle with. Like definitely can speak for myself, which is this this listening fatigue mm-hmm. that you get, just having to kind of concentrate so much, being aware of like, am, am I going to yeah. miss something? Even when nothing's going on. I mean, I'm, there's times like I'm waiting for the doorbell to ring because a package is going to arrive, which is important. Mm-hmm. And I'm listening to silence, yeah. waiting for something that may or may not happen in the next few hours. Mm. And it's that kind of active 
constantly being aware rather than just letting yourself switch off and then be awakened by a doorbell okay uh, and that kind of difference means that by the end of the day you can often find yourself just being kind of exhausted because yeah. you've been having to concentrate so much more than the average person so is it like similar to like they call it like i think zoom fatigue where you're on yeah. video calls for a long time you just have that like kind of exhausted I don't know, like, ugh, I can't do another fucking yeah. video call. <laughs> and like, so I think the reason for Zoom fatigue is that so much of communication is more than just the audio. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of body language involved. There's kind of just mm. more energy around people communicating than yeah. simply seeing a face and talking. Yeah. And when you're looking at a screen, you're having to compensate for the lack of everything else. Okay. You're having to concentrate that much more. Yeah. And it's that same feeling of being tired after being on Zoom calls all day because you're having to concentrate and be aware that bit more than you would need to in, in more like day-to-day -day life. Yeah. So is there any like, like what's your most like not to put you on the spot but i think it's interesting what's your most embarrassing like story where that you think was maybe exasperated by your, your hearing yeah so i mean i have too many like, <laughs> <laughs> i think especially not wearing hearing aids the whole way through my teens yeah and just being in countless situations where I'm trying to like, you know, talk to a girl or yeah. or stand up in front of the school and say something and not hearing a really important thing that everyone else could hear. Okay. Can just make you feel a bit stupid. Yeah. Like I remember one point uh, at school, I had to stand up in front of uh, the whole school and give a, a small presentation about something. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then after the presentation, a teacher said, so Nick, something, something, something. Yeah. And I didn't quite hear it. And you just see oh, like 500 heads turn around and look at me and go, oh, well, no. what's your response? Like the, and, like, and I'm like, so it's like everyone else heard, but I didn't. Oh, man. And then I go, sorry, can you say that again? And they say it again. And again, 500 heads look at me like, what's oh, my response? God. And like, and it, it, turned, it makes me hurt just yeah, like thinking about it. It turned out the teacher just said, Nick, you can sit down now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm there going, what? What? Just but you probably, you probably look like a badass because <laughs> to the kids, it was probably like, Nick, you can stand, stand uh, Nick, you can sit down now. And I'll, when, you know, you're <laughs> saying what? And like for the kids, it probably looked like you're going, yeah, what? I'm in charge now. Oh, no, I definitely didn't feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think there's just been countless situations where, no, I think also this is an important thing with hearing loss in general that it's very easy in that situation to feel like you look stupid. Mm. When someone says something, it's like you're almost too dumb to understand mm. what they've said and be able to compute it and go yeah. forward. Everyone else heard, everyone else didn't manage to not make that out, but because hearing loss is invisible in the extent that you can't see that someone can't hear. Yeah. Um, the way we, I feel like some people often compute it is, oh, this person's just a bit slow or mm -hmm. they're a bit, you know, head in the clouds, aren't yeah. really aware. And this is really difficult and important and especially in professional situations where Absolutely. I'll be in a meeting and a client is asking me a question and there's definitely like a, a proof of capability and qualification mm -hmm. in that communication where I want to like uh, prove to a client that I'm able to yeah. answer their question yeah. and if I'm unable to answer it I think the go-to reason is oh well he's not that good of a consultant yeah. where the reality was oh he just didn't hear mm -hmm. a critical piece of information and so I think this is a constant battle that people with hearing loss, at least I do myself, constant fight is not wanting to be perceived as stupid yeah. or less able than I am. And it's always a bit of a challenge. Yeah, I mean, I totally empathize with that because that's, that's pretty close to how I feel like talking in German, you know? Like I'll yeah. totally like miss, a, a miss some word or something and like everyone starts talking about this topic and I'm like, why are we talking about this topic all of a sudden, you know? Yeah, and then you question just, yourself as well. Yeah, right? and then I notice also too that I get more, I'll speak less German around native German speakers than I will around 
other people who also speak German as a second language. Yeah. And I don't do it like consciously, but I kind of realize lately because I think it's a bit of like, like, oh, if I speak around them and I say something wrong, they're going to catch it and they're yeah. going to find me out kind of thing. Yeah. And it kind of questions your ability. You kind of you went into that situation yeah. with, yeah, my German's pretty good. I can do this. Yeah. And they go, oh, I believe you. Yeah. And then when it doesn't actually fulfill that, what? then you, f I guess, feel like they're doubting you a bit and go, yeah. oh, he's actually not quite as as able in this particular language yeah. as, as we would have thought at the beginning. I've gotten pretty good at the smile and nod, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah, when someone says something, I don't know what they're saying. I'm just like, <laughs> okay, yeah, man, so that's, yeah. There's sure. one of these in the hearing loss community. I Again, I, I can't speak it on behalf of everyone, but I'm sure a lot of other people with hearing loss have done the same, which is someone will say something. Often the best thing to do is just to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I think people, it's like I've been in countless, like way too many, hundreds, thousands of situations where someone yeah. said something I, I didn't know what they said. <laughs> and you've tried different things. Sometimes it's what? Yeah. And then sometimes people are like, oh, it's not even worth repeating. It was like just a, a whatever comment it was just someone talking about oh wow there's, this is weird and you're like what and they're like well, sorry it's not important I was just vocalizing <laughs> but then if you just laugh then you're giving people the response that yeah. sometimes work the problem is that when someone asks the question like so, <laughs> when are we when are we going for lunch and you're like, Haha. like yeah what <laughs> and you're just like oh sorry I didn't hear I just laughed because I thought it was an easier way to get out mm -hmm. of this conversation yeah. <laughs> that's so solid it works every time every time hey uh, so is there any I think we talked about kind of the the difficulties with um, hearing loss is there any like positives of hearing loss and I can I can even lead into one that I was Go thinking on. about how would you see it so I don't know what's going on upstairs in your apartment but <laughs> i think they're having kind of like i think they're having a slip and slide that's all i can think of because it sounds like a kid running and they're screaming and i don't know what's going on and i look over at you and you're just hanging out having a good time like you don't you don't notice <laughs> yeah i mean that is that's probably the better way to put it like when there's annoying sounds a lot of them are less annoying okay so I mean, I, it is loud up there. Okay. <laughs> Even I hear it sometimes. <laughs> but generally speaking, I sleep really well. Yeah. Like I don't get, I'm not a light sleeper that is woken up by uh. external like sounds that might wake up the average person. Um, if, to be honest, that's almost as far as it goes, like okay. having hearing loss. Uh, okay, another cool one is because I have hearing loss, I've learned to lip read. Oh, okay. Like, this is so natural to me. He said, like, what am I saying? Oh, damn. What? Oh, baby. Whoa. But also, everyone does that. As soon as yeah, you I say a clip read, they all go, hello, what am I saying? And uh, Did you say boob? No, I said poop. Oh. Uh, wow. Get, same, get same, your head out of the same, gutter. <laughs> Jeez, man. This is a family show. <laughs> same thing. Whatever. But, <laughs> but yeah, lip reading is actually massively beneficial i mean well i mean it's beneficial for me because they have hearing loss but i know i don't realize that i am lip reading so much but thanks so much for looking more direct yeah i was just getting kind of uncomfortable with that. <laughs> <laughs> i switch a little bit. yeah so yes. it's no it's 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 useful to be able to lip read and that basically just means that by seeing someone's mouth moving i can tell largely what what they're saying yeah uh, based on the way their lips are moving but then um, the the masks must be kind of difficult for you absolute huh? nightmare because so, i even have problems i kind of feel like i didn't realize how much i rely on lip reading at least a bit to kind of support my hearing but i noticed with the mask it's a little bit more difficult that's a good way to put it it's like lip reading supports hearing yeah so basically you have the audio side of it and then you see the the way lips move and yep. then you kind of match them together and you're like do those two make sense mm -hmm. uh, and then you can cut out of that you discern meaning yeah and so um yeah sometimes i would hear a sound but their lips didn't move in the way that i thought i heard it yeah and then i'm like okay well i should probably ask for clarification on what they said mm -hmm. but yeah when like since the pandemic and everyone's wearing masks it's just yeah 
it almost makes it pointless sometimes and i just can't hear there'll yeah. be times where i would go into wow. let's say i go into like a doctor's office and the receptionist is wearing a mask and is also behind a, a glass like sheet oh yeah, yeah so kind of like a bank teller kind yeah of, double uh, whammy and so the sound is being like uh, restricted a bit both by the mask double and, muffle. and by the sheet double muffle yeah absolutely and then also i can't uh i can't lip read yeah. and then on top of that they might be speaking german oh uh, no and so i'm i'm trying to do my speak my best german and then or deal with these things and it, to be honest it gets to a point where i'm just i'm i'm sorry i, I can't yeah <laughs> i can't hear so yeah it, it is really a challenge but you know another interesting part of the mask side of it is when so even a lot of people with let's say normal hearing mm -hmm. might struggle with masks as well <clears throat> and that's because masks do prevent uh certain sound frequencies from going through mm -hmm. at the required amount to hear it clearly uh, and higher pitches higher sound frequencies are a little bit more they're they're weaker okay. and so the the mask will actually prevent the sound from going through mm -hmm. and so if you look at speech you have kind of vowels a e i o u these are a lot of lower frequencies yeah. but then a lot of the consonants the these kind of sounds okay. are high frequencies and the, the using these two sounds together is how we create words. So yeah. the difference between peach, speech, teeth, they all are e e e sounds, uh, but it's the the consonants frequency. at the beginning and end which completely change the meaning. Mm -hmm. And so if someone's wearing a mask, you will hear the e e e part yeah. like a bit clearer, but the consonants that change the complete meaning of the word mm -hmm. will be you know restricted by the fact you're wearing a mask yeah so this still means that even people who have very very slight high frequency hearing loss this is being accentuated by someone wearing a mask okay. and so if you're struggling to hear because of the mask yeah uh, it could be partially lip reading partially maybe you also have a bit of high frequency hearing loss as yeah, well yeah maybe that's a good question hey speaking of uh hearing loss so is there is there a good way to refer to people with hearing loss without like being uh, offensive or, you know, like what's the preferred vernacular? Yeah. So personally, I don't really mind, mm. but I think it's a very personal thing as well. Some people have differing opinions on this, whether to say hearing impaired or mm. have hearing loss or are hard of hearing. Um, I think the reality is that some of these terms were used more in the past than they are today. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you see this with uh, a lot of other words, the way that words change in meaning over time. I think you can like the word disabled now, not long before was handicapped and handicapped is now seen as a- It's a golf term now. <laughs> that's yeah. technically it's a golf term, but it is, uh, it, yeah, it, it you wouldn't call someone handicapped because that is it's got a uh, derogatory meaning to it prior to that in the us it was retardation mm. that was as a medical term and spastic is a medical term but you wouldn't call someone who has uh, a condition a retard or spastic mm. because over time the meaning of the word has actually changed from the uh, the kind of scientific interpretation yeah. to what we now perceive as a social kind of interpretation of good and bad. And so I think the same thing with uh, hard of hearing, hearing impaired, hearing and loss, some were more older, like used in the past than they were today. I can't really tell you like which one's which necessarily, okay. but for me, I think hearing impaired and hear, uh, hearing loss yeah. are two like very commonly so I said, oh, that's my friend Nick. Oh, yeah. By the way, he's got a bit of hearing loss. Like that's. I think that's yeah, cool. cool. I'm completely fine with that. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of Nick with hearing loss, so you're you're pretty into music, right? Yeah. I saw you got the the DJ booth in the room. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a clip of that later. Yeah. There's a piano mm. over there too. Yeah. Like little little Stevie Wonder playing that out. Exactly. So uh, like, uh, first of all, what kind of music are you into? Oh, well, I mean, I mean, into a lot of different types of music, I think. But yeah, I'll play 
piano and that kind of like maybe more contemporary classical stuff mm -hmm. but then i'm also really into electronic music and i'll listen to a lot of techno house yeah garage reggae like drum and bass okay like, um yeah kind of so basically like fulfilling all the stereotypes of berlin I, every yeah i could not be more <laughs> but i have a berlin poster right here which is um a, tonal, a, a tonal music festival poster based in berlin which yeah. is all kind of experimental techno music okay in many ways yeah cool. do you feel like your relationship with music is like um like in any way affected by your, your hearing your hearing loss or I think it is it is to an extent but I think like there's a really important uh, <clears throat> clarification which I've been leaning into which is there's a difference between functional sounds and emotional sounds mm -hmm. and I think I personally look at like speech as a functional sound because you need to hear a lot of the different sound frequencies in order for the function of speech to work yeah. like in order to, for me to understand what you're saying and discern meaning from it i need to understand all these different uh functional sounds then there are kind of more emotional sounds yeah which i would more think of as music which is something that if i miss parts of it it's not going to drastically affect how i perceive it and what it effectively does emotionally mm -hmm. and so i think even with hearing loss you can get so much value out of music yeah. regardless of whether or not you're hearing all of it okay um with speech not so much the case i mean it can be the difference between something making sense and not making sense with speech but with music you would probably hear you would hear it in a different way but it still has its own meaning in that regard <clears throat> i think like having hearing enhancement in any respect with music will hit, let you hear it in a different way and i think this happens a lot more with older people who uh their hearing is deteriorated over a period of time that the often the the topic is don't you want to hear music like you used to hear it mm. and because it's different over time maybe you have more high frequency hearing loss you'll hear the hi-hats less you'll hear the clarity of the music less everything ends up sounding a bit more muffled and dull yeah. Uh, and then if you then account for it with some hearing device of some sort uh, then it will add more clarity and more color to the music that maybe you heard a long time ago or for me I guess I, I'd never heard that until until I was able to listen to it with hearing enhancement okay so I think there's like so before you were listening the cello but now you're now you're on the violin like hey that's a pretty sweet violin yeah <laughs> exactly the more the lower tones are a bit easier to hear the clarity the higher tones um and i think you know all this is important also in an orchestra when you have these different elements mm -hmm. you're listening to the low tones and high tones together because there's Blends. importance to that mm -hmm. it, it creates music mm -hmm. and like an overall you know message or a song but that's mm -hmm. made of so many different instruments some low like timpani drums and then you have like flautists playing the flute on the other side yeah. and you know together that creates something different if you have hearing loss in the high frequencies then maybe you're going to be hearing all of the low part of the music but you're not going to hear the flutes yeah. the violins the, the person who plays the triangle Oh, that's that's the, the only the, job I could pull off. The, yeah. I'd probably still screw it up. <laughs> I believe I'd be you, like man. hanging out waiting. It's like every time I'm waiting for a video call, I'm hanging out waiting. I'm like, all right, I got this call coming up. Got to be ready. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I look at the clock, and it's like five minutes after when I was supposed to be on the call. It's like I wasn't even doing anything. <laughs> you, you, have to, you turn up late to orchestra Ding! practice. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you feel like your relationship in music is maybe more? more special because you you have like this really intense relationship with like sounds in your life hmm to to be honest not really I, I don't think i look at music any differently because i have hearing loss i think i just personally always liked music mm -hmm. and hearing loss definitely affects the way i listen to it but yeah. i don't think it is changed my love for it in okay. a positive or negative way mm. yeah cool
I got some notes of other stuff we can talk about just in case I have a moment like this where do you know a joke while I'm trying to sort through my notes? No. What's the funniest joke you know? Do you know anything about ducks and bars? Oh god, we're not doing this one again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I have a question here. Oh, here's a fun one for all the so I think you're pretty young and attractive guy myself, even as a married man. Thank you, Greg. Uh, is there any way, does your hearing loss affect your dating life in any way? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, unfortunately, yeah. It, no, it goes back again to kind of not wanting to be seen as stupid or yeah. not wanting to be seen as anything other than the way I would want people to see me. Uh, and I think we, we all, uh, we all do this in every aspect of our lives and well in many ways that you know we wear the clothes that we want to be seen wearing we mm. kind of say the things we want to be seen saying <laughs> like this um, but when your hearing can prevent you from being the person that you want to be yeah then you know you're you're on your best form in a date or yeah. you're trying to kind of impress in whatever way it kind of needs to be it ought to be done mm -hmm. um but it, it can really hinder your ability to communicate and connect with, with mm. people in that regard and so i mean i can remember a date back at, in university years ago where i was in a bar and the music was just the i think the music and the background noise was just so loud mm -hmm. that I couldn't really hear what she was saying. I think mm. she had a very, she was, uh, was quite a soft speaker as mm. well. And soft you know, talker. Soft talker. That's an episode of Seinfeld, I think. Is it? Too. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll well, we have to watch that one. afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> she, she was quite softly spoken. And uh, I didn't want to say, hey, I've got hearing loss mm -hmm. because I didn't want to kind of discredit myself. Or just count myself in front of someone yeah. um, that I wanted to think, I guess, highly of me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you end up kind of finding yourself in embarrassing situations where you, you miss something and then you'll be like, oh, is, is the music's too loud in here. And you kind of try and blame something else rather than kind of, yeah. uh, I guess, taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so there's been like a number of situations where it's. Um, it's a challenge to kind of project yourself in the way that you would like to be seen yeah. um, because of the environment that you're in and ultimately because of hearing loss. Yeah, but it's like, you know, if someone someone came to a date, I think they wouldn't, like now at least like 2022, I think they wouldn't like not wear their glasses or something, you know, and try to hide yeah, that. Yeah, but that, that, that's a great thing to point out because we don't see glasses as a medical aid yeah exactly and so you know if i was wearing hearing aids like visible behind the ear hearing aids uh on a date i personally would be very self-conscious mm -hmm. to do that okay and you know i i think it's amazing when people are not self-conscious yeah. to do that but i think looking at the statistics of everyone who could benefit from hearing aids and the people who actually do which is a very small proportion mm -hmm. of people who could. A lot of that is because people just don't want to be someone who wears hearing aids mm. uh, because of the fear of how they look to society. And I think and when I tell a lot of people about the project that we're working on, like we're redesigning hearing technology to actually make it desirable. Yeah. Um, I would say like, hey, if you know, if you had to wear hearing aids, would you? And people are like, oh, no. Yeah, but I think it scares people the idea of like oh you're a hearing aid wearer you have mm. to wear hearing aids yeah. uh, and because I think people are scared of how other people are going to see them and so you put yourself in that date situation and you know maybe you just don't want to be seen as someone who has a disability or yeah. someone who's aging or someone who is less able and I think this is you know what we're really trying to change we're Absolutely. really trying to change that messaging that story that 
you know there is isn't there's nothing wrong inherently with with that person mm-hmm. in the exact same way that someone wearing glasses is any not any less of a person or eligible bachelor because of their eyesight mm-hmm. that's just it doesn't make sense so how can we kind of empower people who do have uh you know less less than common hearing profile yeah. um to be able to hear in the best way possible while simultaneously feel comfortable like visually uh while they're with people as well absolutely yeah i mean that's that's what it's all about is really just making i mean making a thing which is like the the decibels hearing enhancer we're working on that like you know you'd want to wear um and then also just changing the conversation around it because it's like i don't know it's it's not like uh I mean, also like being a bit of an outsider too, it doesn't seem like something that like makes you any different. Like, um, like I know you and I, I also have a, a pretty good friend from school too that has hearing loss and it's like, you know, there's no, there's no difference between talking to people and there's no, yeah. It's like, it's like glasses, you know, but the whole, the whole myth around hearing, uh, hearing loss and eye loss is different, but the, I mean, the situation is functionally Exactly. Same, and I just I just don't understand how it got to that point, but I I think we know a way we can get out of that. Definitely, and that's that's the important yeah. part. Yeah, and I think we're taking a lot of inspiration from looking at the eyewear world because yeah. I guess like when we were both at school as well, uh, and even like young older people, generations would like you wouldn't want to be wearing glasses at school. Mm-hmm. You're being called four eyes yeah. or specky. Or whatever and it was like seen as in some ways like a disability yeah. or like a, just a hindrance a social hindrance for, for sure that you wouldn't want to wear glasses i mean i mean there were comments like women shouldn't wear glasses because you know it ob- obstructs the beauty of the face and uh, crazy, <laughs> crazy like old, uh, old people way of looking at it it's like it's like super crazy and now look at it how it is today like yeah. people want to wear glasses yep. that and and they might not even need them and i think just seeing that change seeing that it's possible mm-hmm. gives me so much confidence i fully believe that it's possible to do the same with hearing tech yeah absolutely and yeah i think you look at the way that you know six years ago people weren't wearing airpods mm-hmm. all the time and now everyone's got something in their ears everyone's, like everyone's the world podding. is changing everyone's putting yeah and uh it's yeah it, it's it's possible to change the way the world sees certain technologies. Yep. There just needs to be someone or some entity that is going to help guide people through that change. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, speaking of like uh, the way people see technologies. So I was, I was perusing through the statistics of like how well do hearing aids actually work? Cause I was thinking like people aren't wearing them mm. um, because they, you know, maybe they're just the technology isn't that good, but um, actually, hearing aids work pretty well, at least from the the like data's I can find on the the old internets up there. Yeah. Um, so maybe you can talk about like how how wearing hearing aids has really like helped your life or made things different or changed things. Yeah. Like, so I didn't wear hearing aids for the first ten years that I knew that I needed yeah them. like that's so a long time ages like 10 to around 19 and those 20. are like the formative years incredibly too, formative you know? years and yeah. I just kind of lived without it and then after that time I wore hearing aids and so mm-hmm. I'm wearing them now actually they are they're like a contact lenses versions of hearing aids okay. so they sit quite deep in my ear canal yeah. and so you can't see them from the outside um but I still didn't want them and uh I did get them because I ultimately realized I was spending a lot of money on my university course. I should probably try and <laughs> hear my lecture, a lecture when, when they're talking. Um, but what I kind of realized is that once I finally accepted the, the use of the technology, mm-hmm. my life changed massively. Yeah. My ability to communicate with people confidently just mm-hmm. completely changed. So I could uh be in situations where i knew that i would be able to hear people Mm -hmm. and it's a very big difference where you're 
in a situation where you're like, I'm probably not going to hear people. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to be quiet and kind of stay in my corner. Yeah. Uh, to a situation where you know you can hear people and the means that you can contribute in conversation, that you, your voice can be heard and you can add to the dialogue in a way that um, without hearing enhancement, I wasn't able to. Yeah. And so this is just super important, really just with communicating with people. Mm -hmm. And the, the knock-on effect of that is a massive boost, boost in self-esteem. Mm -hmm from being someone who I think I always felt like I had to kind of prove myself because there were so many situations where I could not prove myself uh, to ultimately feeling like I was able to be the person that I kind of wanted to be in certain social situations. So I think it's incredibly, incredibly valuable technology. And it's just such a shame that people don't feel empowered or able to kind of adopt it and use it for the benefit that it can be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's really such a big shame. But you know what what's interesting is like you're a pretty pretty sociable, personable guy. I almost wonder if like because you had this thing where you couldn't hear that well for such a long time that you got maybe up to like let's say like a, a, the average level and then once you had the hearing on it was like you were like the super <laughs> superhuman kind of like hangout person like oh my god did you hang out with nick at the party last night that guy was super cool <laughs> okay and i don't think that was ever okay <laughs> but i will agree with the the sentiment that i could only get so far with my hearing uh -huh. until i had hearing aids that actually boosted my ability to perform in certain situations yeah. socially professionally uh, intimately like in so many different ways I think just being able to it all comes down to communication I think this really isn't kind of stressed enough in different ways I see some hearing aid companies saying don't you want to hear the birds singing again yeah. I'm like, not really I'm not <laughs> to be honest I'm not really fast whether the birds are singing it's nice every now and then but it's not critical dude sound I, can, for I got me. crows outside my apartment oh, like, all day I'm gonna turn that down <laughs> <laughs> exactly but really communication is everything because it is the way we build relationships the way we connect with other people the way we push our own sense of self into mm -hmm. society yeah. is by communicating with people and we have tools such as our ability to vocalize and our ability to hear that enable that and you know if our tools aren't if our tools are blunt yeah. then we're not going to be able to to really interact in in our fullest and so really that's what hearing tech enables it's enabling you to communicate and be a better version of yourself mm -hmm. in every social situation yeah it's, I, I like the idea of tools because also it's like you know if you're if you're a carpenter you don't want to focus on is my hammer dull or not you're just like i want to make this nice cabinet you that's know that's a great way to put like, it like it's like why should i have to worry about if like the if my screwdriver's screwing or if my yeah, yeah. my saws are sawing you know yeah, i just exactly. i'm just trying to make a cabinet here you know exactly that. wow what a funny guy hey speaking of tools my camera ran out of memory while we were filming that but luckily we got the audio so i'm gonna edit in some random clips for you and you can enjoy the rest of the chat have fun I'm trying to make a cabinet here, you know? Exactly. That, that's a great way to put it, though, because I think this is how we approach almost everything else that we buy. Mm -hmm. So you're running a marathon. You're going to buy some of the tools, such mm -hmm. as running shoes. Yeah. And, like, your running shoes do enable you to run that race and to kind of do it in the way that is going to allow you to perform at your best. Now, imagine if all the running shoes were, that were available you they might have improved your life but you just didn't want to wear them because it made you look like an idiot if you yeah. wore them that you were willing to forego your best running ability mm -hmm. just because you didn't want to look like a, a yeah. weird person like running the race yeah. and that's a great way to kind of think about what it's like with hearing aids because I knew that I needed hearing aids mm -hmm. it was it was obvious but it wasn't at all like on my to-do list to like 
to to benefit from that technology and yeah. you know it took me 10 years of kind of i guess denial and acceptance and going it's not really that much of a problem to eventually get to a point where i was you like you know what i'm gonna go ahead and buy these but that's 10 years of my life that yeah I, that i missed in yeah. in some sense and i think this is really what i i would love to be able to help with other people that we can you know as soon as someone realizes that they could benefit from hearing technology mm-hmm. that it's oh obviously i'm just going to get some decibels yeah. like like why wouldn't you and i think people are kind of like oh, i wish i had bad eyesight because then i could get yeah. like, a nice pair of glasses from warby parker or from ace and tate yeah. or whatever and it's almost kind of like a nice excuse to compliment your appearance yeah finally with, with a piece now of uh, hardware so yeah it, the hesitation for buying any product in life mm-hmm. should not be that society is going to look down on me if i'm seen using this yeah that's uh, that's heavy man that's yeah that's a big it's a bit of a weird way to look at it but i can't off the top of my head think of any other kind of consumer product i've bought where i'm like oh, i want to make sure no one sees that mm-hmm. I'm, that i've got this i think there's always the element of wanting people to see like oh hey you've got a cool phone you've got a cool pair of headphones or whatever like there's a a status symbol that kind of attached to that Mm. and it's kind of it's cool to own it in its own way the hearing aid industry seems to be the only industry that seems to stigmatize its own products by implying that you should be ashamed of wearing it wow yeah by making it hidden and hiding it as much as possible and so i think we just need to kind of turn that on its head like visibility is critical to making something become cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree, man. Uh, thanks for having this conversation with me. This was super yeah. fun. Uh, I think we'll probably do this again in, future, in the future on other topics. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you don't know, we have a company called Decibels, D-E-C-I-B-E-L-S. And we are at decibels.so and you can check us out. Um, You can already pre-order a product that we're working on. And with that, we'll see you in the next one.